What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to Azerinth Healer, Book One, by Rhaegar. Hello, George. We are on Chapter Four, Exploration. Waking up, Ilya felt a feeling of warmth surfusing her. For the first time in months, she was truly and utterly happy. I might still have no idea where I am or what's going on, but at least I'll survive. I'm pretty tough at this point, and I can heal myself too. Blink is perfect for fleeing if needed, and if there's something too strong for me, just need to remember not to eat any weird berries. Blinking upstairs and into, one of, into the roof of the building, she instinctively looked up at the sky. The suns nearly blinded her. After months in the chamber of awakening and last night's quick romp, she had totally forgotten that the suns were this bright. Her eyes hurt, but a smile was on her lips. After a couple of minutes of adjusting, she pulled her arm down from in front of her face to look at the true view of the forest around her. The trees were still just as densely packed as they had been on her arrival. The bushes were the same, and the suns only reached small patches of the ground she could see, and yet it all felt different. Her elevation wasn't just literal in nature. The forest didn't look suffocating anymore. It felt alive, full of things to discover. Birds chirped as the leaves rustled in the wind. She was finally outside, activating her aura. Her tattoos flared to life with their signature pale blue light, barely noticeable in the sunlight. She scratched a simple compass rose into the roof of the temple with one of her nails. It took some effort, but enhanced by her aura and stats, she was able to carve narrow furrows even into the rock itself. Obviously, she didn't know where North was, and there were two suns, but it did help her orient herself, so she did it. Northward, according to her randomized compass, was a carpet of dense treetops until a chain of mountains could be seen in the distance. They were very far away, too far to reach on foot without considerable preparation and gear. She could tell that much given her previous hunk hu hunking experience, hiking experience. Eastward was also forest until, barely noticeable given the distance, grassland started. Plains. If I want to find humans, I'd probably have to search there. Another question is if they'll be friendly towards me. At least I know humans exist somewhere, thanks to the diaries and statues. Or they used to. Looking southward, Ilias could see a couple more mountains. These were far closer than the others, and behind them was another full mountain chain like the north. There seemed to be rocky plains in the valley between the rocky slopes. She could even see a river. Definitely the most reasonable thing to reach for now, Ilya surmised, given that the valley was much closer than the plains in the east or the mountains in the north. Westwards was only trees, as far as the eye could see. The green expanse was only occasionally broken by streaks of blue water, rivers likely originating from one of the mountain ranges. So the closest way out of this drake-infested forest is southeast or directly south. Going in one of those directions seemed like a more reasonable d distance to cover, but Ilya had no idea exactly how long it would take. I don't have any supplies, I don't have a backpack, I don't even have a knife or a water bottle, or whatever they use here. Most fantasy lands I've read about are medieval, but it's not like that means anything. For all I know, they could be using laser rifles and cloaked airplanes. Ilya then blinked back into the main hall of the temple and began to look around. Might find some supplies around here. I do have a feeling this is a rather medieval world, though. I mean, come on, drakes? Walking up to one of the closed doors lining the hall, she felt a wall and blinked inside. Only to come face to face with a corpse. Ilya's scream reverberated through the temple. She heard the fluttering of wings and surprised squawks from the trees outside as she stared at the skeleton in front of her, heart hammering into her chest. Holy shitball, Skelly! You scared the crap out of me! After smacking the skeleton on the head like an old friend, she looked around the room. It was almost claustrophobically small. The skeleton itself was sitting in a chair, wearing rusted plate armor, and that reminded her of a knight. The skull didn't look quite right, though. One eye socket was entirely smashed in, and one of its arms lay a meter to the side. Light came in through the cracks in the wall and the ceiling, and a broken wooden shelf lay on the floor at the back covered with vines that were growing into the room through a few holes in the stone. 
There were some books, too, but they all turned to dust as soon as she touched them. No runes prevented their decay. Removing the skeleton from the rotting chair, she saw that it was still wearing boots. Well, would you look at that? Carefully removing them from the skeleton, she appraised them. They're in all right shape. Not too bad. Identify? Ding. Old sturdy boots. Common quality. Hmm. No 15 plus walking speed or anything like that? That's disappointing. Oh well. Ilya took the boots and removed all the dust inside, then blinked back out of the room. I'll just pile stuff here. Leaving the boots on the ground in the main hall, she continued to investigate the rooms. There were eight in total. One was the one where she had broken the door to get out. One was the skeleton room. The next three rooms held only dust and stone. Whatever may have been stored there had long since turned to dust. Blinking into the next room, Ilya looked around in surprise. This one was lined with shelves containing clay pots, bowls, and they were all caked with years of dust and cobwebs. An ancient stone oven stood in the corner, damaged by a chunk of stone that had fallen from the ceiling ages past. Kitchen, very nice. Maybe there's a water flask or a knife for me to use somewhere? Looking around, she realized most of the things inside were rusted far beyond use. The design reminded her of what she'd seen in museums. Every item looked a little different. She assumed they were all handmade. The pans were heavy, but everything is ruined. This place might very well be a time capsule. Returning to use reconstruction on the items didn't help. Destruction seemed to be able to affect inanimate objects, whereas reconstruction didn't except for the statues, but they were perhaps somewhere in between. Figures would be way too convenient to spell. No more visits to any tailor or blacksmith. Couldn't have me getting something like that, eh, universe? Searching through the kitchen, she found a not-too-rusty canteen. Rusty canteen. Common quality. Of course. Well, it's better than nothing, Ilya grumbled to herself. The few knives she found were sadly completely unusable. The thin shards of metal were too worn by time to be used for anything other than making more rust. She decided she'd found everything that could be salvaged or used and continued her search. The next room was completely empty again. So why are there so many empty rooms? Hmm, what if she tried to use Blink to get downstairs? The third spot she tried worked, and she found herself in a chamber that at first looked very similar to her own. How many of these do they have? Well, let's finish up upstairs first. The last room held some barrels, without any contents other than the dust inside. Beer? Wine? Maybe, maybe cinderberry wine? Laughing at her own joke, she went back to the main hall. Walking through the broken-down entryway she'd used when she'd fled the wolves, she checked the room again. It looked exactly the same, with no indication as to how she was teleported away in the first place. Activating her magic perception, she saw runes all over the ground where she'd fought against the wolves months ago. Interesting. She went back and checked on all the other rooms again, this time with magic perception activated, but made no further discoveries. I guess downstairs it is, then. Warping back into the unexplored chamber, she soon found this floor had the exact same layout as hers. Blue moon grass was growing on the walls, and the bed was just as old as hers. The library, however, held far more books than hers had held at the start. And even better, they were still intact, the shelves glowing brightly with numerous runes. It took a couple of hours to sort through them all. A significant portion of them were even more diaries. She took them all with her upstairs. Two books were actually useful to her. Azerinth Fighting, Advanced Stances 1, and Azerinth Fighting, Advanced Stances 2. Seems like the stock is rather similar, though. More history books. She wasn't too fond of the Order's history books. They depicted themselves as some sort of great savior mages without any flaws. I guess that's what happens when you write your own history down. Bunch of arrogant pricks. Blinking back to the main hall, she tried to blink downstairs from all the other eight rooms. She only found one more chamber. It was much like the other two, except that only one shelf of books remained, none of which were new to her. Having an idea, she tried to warp further down. To her surprise, she succeeded. She found herself in a rather large hall. After the warp, she fell a couple of meters before hitting the ground. There's no dust here. The room was illuminated, yet not by moss on the walls. There was some sort of artificial light source at the top of the room, and some of the walls... Small circles of steel with four metal prongs extended from the plate 
At their center glowed a cool near blue light. Magical lamps. Fancy. At least they do have some sort of technology. I'll try to dismantle one of these after I'm sure it's safe to... Her thought was interrupted by an arrow shooting past her head. Ilya's tattoos flared to life and she dodged at the last second. Though it had been close enough that she'd felt it sting her cheek. Did I just... Another three arrows flew in her direction. She could not yet see who was firing or from where. Leaping to the right, Ilya avoided all of them with ease. Dodge arrows? Fuck I'm awesome! Looking for the originator of the assault, Ilya saw a patch of shadow in the corner of the room. It shifted, and a humanoid form slowly unfolded itself to the height of about three and a half meters. Oh, shit. Guardian Golem. Level unknown. Using Identify, she jumped back a couple of meters to get some distance from the golem. Activating Magical Perception, her enemy glowed a dark red. Well, that answers the question if all magic is blue. What are you doing? I think I've said this before, but the way I'm holding up my phone is there is a D&D &D dice tray with a rock in front of the phone and a rock behind the phone, and the rock behind it is sitting on a book. For some reason, George is sitting directly behind the book and just sniffing the rock. You are very weird. You know that? You're a strange little creature that lives in my house. Boop. You've been booped. What shall you do now? On the golem's left arm was a seemingly automatic crossbow, and in his... In its right fist was a mace as big as Ilya. I really don't want to get hit by that, she murmured to herself, taking in the large creature now shambling towards her. The drake had terrified her. The wolves had damn near killed her. She gritted her teeth and circled around the monster, much like she would a human opponent in the ring. Do I flee? She felt a sense she could see and... What? She felt tense and could see and feel the magic emanating from the ancient guardian of this forgotten place. And yet she found she wasn't afraid. On the contrary, she could hardly keep the smile off her face. A challenge for my new abilities. Well, let's see what I've learned. I can just teleport out with two blinks if I, can ha if I can't handle it. Getting into an advanced Azeroth stance, Ilya prepared herself as the golem slowly walked towards her. Ilya rocketed forward, leaving her position in a rush faster than any Earth human could have ever possibly managed. She reached the golem's right side in an instant. She felt a thrill like nothing she'd ever felt before. She felt power. The golem turned slowly and tried to hit her with the mace. She easily shifted her body to the side, allowing the massive weapon to swing harmlessly past her. Her laughter echoed through the hall. You're pretty fucking slow. Then it was her turn. She landed a fury of punches, each blow leaving dents in its metal shell. Even without destruction, the construction was still trying to turn and attack her with its mace, but Ilya simply danced around the golem, staying out of reach. These skills are seriously no joke. I've never fought against anything with them, and they enhance my fighting so naturally. After another series of punches to one of the golem's legs, she decided to use destruction. Her punch landed on the golem's left leg, and half of it exploded backwards as her fist collided with it. The metal was badly dented, and the golem had difficulty standing upright. Another punch disabled its right leg. As it fell to the ground, Ilya jumped backwards. Well, it seems like your question marks aren't really that scary after all, Guardian. Doing a small mock curtsy in front of the downed golem's head, its eyes suddenly flared a bright red. Caught in an awkward position, Ilya could only look at the golem as it raised its mace and smashed it right into her. Ilya was sent flying backwards into the wall, 15 meters behind her. The impact knocked all the air out of her lungs. Blood dripped down her chin as she smiled. Oh man, that hurt. Yep. I rather am stupid sometimes. She felt a deep ache from the hit. But for some reason, she couldn't stop herself from smiling. This was living. Checking her stats, she saw that she had lost over a third of her health from that one hit. Quickly using reconstruction, she healed back a part of her health. Blinking past a few crossbow bolts fired her way. Why am I having so much fun? You're literally a metal giant. I should be terrified. Nice move, though, Mr. Metal. If, it wa if I wasn't so fast, you would have splattered me easily. Lucky for me, you seem ill-suited for reacting to speed-based attacks, like this one. 
Blanking above the golem's head, she did a front flip, landing on top of the golem's back with a powerful kick. The, guardi the guardian exploded downward, its eyes immediately losing their light. Ding, you have defeated Guardian Golem. For killing an adversary ten or more levels above your own, you receive bonus experience. Access to the treasure room is now possible. Ding, Azerman Healer has reached level 13. Five stat points awarded. Nice. Sitting down on the defeated golem, she breathed out. This is way too much fun. I nearly died there. Her heart still pounding in her chest. She laid down completely on the golem's broken body. I do feel amazing. Is this what being an adventurer feels like in a dangerous world? Lying there for a while, Ilya simply enjoyed the moment until a detail from one of the notifications came back to her. Did it say treasure room? Jumping up from the motionless enemy, she looked around her room. She could see a huge double door at the end of the hall, right behind where the golem had been hiding. Walking towards it, she glanced back over her shoulder and noticed the body of the golem hadn't disappeared. If this was a game, wouldn't it fade away? Seems like it's not a game after all, or at least not like any I've ever played. Turning back to the door, she continued down a long corridor. Using magic perception, she could see bright runes written on the double doors at the end of it. Let's find out what's in there, shall we? She said with a huge grin on her face. She reached the double doors and looked on as the runes faded. A resounding crack echoed through the chamber, and the entrance opened. She was greeted by a cloud of stale air that triggered a mild coughing fit. How can the air in there be even worse than in the corridor? It's the same age. Waiting for the stale air to disperse a little, Ilya entered the supposed, the supposed treasure room. Looking around, there were a lot of shelves and a few chests. Two were open and empty, while the shelves held nothing but cobwebs and rubble. Not a left, lot of treasure left in here, huh? Well, let's see if, anything there, if there's anything else in the chest. Ilya approached it. It was unlocked, and the lid came away easily. In fact, it came away in her hand, rotten with age. Looking inside, she, she felt herself tense with anticipation. A handful of metal coins glinted at the bottom of the chest, on top of some sort of folded cloth. It wasn't exactly a dragon's hoard. At least it's not empty. Taking the five silver and one gold from the chest, she held them in her hand. They were heavy, more so than any coin she'd ever held. Then, picking out the last item, she marveled at the quality. Cloak of the Night. High quality. You're harder to detect in the dark. She hugged the cloak immediately. It's so soft, I love it. Putting on the cloak, it covered nearly all of her. She would have looked a bit like a wraith had it not been for the pajamas underneath. I am the Pajama Death. Tattoos flaring the light. She teleported to the nearest wall and punched it. Cracks forming all over it, and some chunks of stone fall into the ground after she removed her fist. The light blue of her tattoos didn't penetrate the cloak from within. I like it, she said with glee. Ilya tried to use Blink from every room in the cellar, but sadly there was no other destination she could find. She looked at the ceiling and squinted her eyes. Before going back upstairs, there was one thing that had been bugging her since she... or that she had to try out. The room was the perfect size for it. One of the largest she had found so far. Not really sure what she was doing, she tried to use Blink twice in a row without touching the ground or walls in between. It didn't work. Which meant no teleportation flying. It was a sad realization, but one that was worth knowing before she tried it in battle, which she may have nearly tried against the Guardian. Hmm, let's see, she murmured, blinking into the air while still in the same hall. This time she aimed right next to the wall, and when she appeared in midair, she touched it and used another blink. This time it worked, and she found herself back in the third chamber upstairs. Yeah, I do have to touch something before I can use it again. Going back to the top, she looked at the small hoard she'd collected from the searching all of it placed inside an improvised cloth bag. Checking her cloak thoroughly, she was happy to find two small pockets, putting the coins inside. She noted they would be clinking around all the time, so heading into the kitchen, she removed some metal wire from one of the pots and bent it around the coins. Grabbing the shoes from her pile, she was confronted with how filthy they were. The chest had at least prevented the cloak from centuries of dust and cobwebs. After a moment's thought, she ran outside and headed for the stream she'd found before. Once there, she cleaned the boots thoroughly before putting them on. For the first time in a while, she was at least mostly dressed. Pajamas didn't really count, after all. Nearly clothed now. I hope these ancient boots don't break when I kick something. 
The boots fit quite snugly, so at least they were unlikely to slip off while she fought. Grabbing some more of the cinder berries, Ilya returned to the temple, sitting on the crumbling roof and looking out over the forest. She planned out her next steps. I should prepare to go towards the mountains in the south. Looking at the distant target, she sighed. It's going to take a while. I also need to find some clothes, and food, and herbs, and spices. Looking into the distance, she once more thought of her past. Ilya enjoyed the freedom she had here, all the time spent improving her fighting, but she did miss her other hobbies, her bed, and most of all, good food. She was not going to be getting lectured by her parents anymore, though it did feel a little strange to know they might think her dead. The sad part is, I don't even want to know how they would react. Rory would at least be devastated if I didn't return, but at this point, she's probably gone through at least four equally devastating moments. That's just how she is. Ilya realized she was, she actually missed Mark, her trainer, the most. She smiled. Guess he was more important than I thought. She sighed, looking at the endless forest. He'd get this. I'm not sure if this gets better or worse in the end. Training in itself is fun, but fighting against that golem. I can see myself getting into that. And I have no responsibilities here, really. No annoying fast food job. Plus, I could heal people, if there are any, that is. Guess I'll find out tomorrow. Going back downstairs, she removed some of the blue moon grass from the walls and stored it in her cloak. It would help her keep the faster training up for a while while she traveled. I can check how fast my skills progress without the blue moon grass, too. There isn't really any indication of if it's even improving anything. I do hope the Order actually tested its effectiveness beyond the body change. Sleeping early, she dreamed of a cozy, well-cushioned bed. And that's the end of Chapter 4. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, have fun, guys.